First things first, Laura, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, no worries. Our pleasure. So yeah. before we get into the new uh, upcoming album, Head Above Water, I, I would like to get your take on kind of your own development as a, as a guitarist, a musician, singer, songwriter, everything. Because yes. when I started my research on you, I just delved into some YouTube videos and then some of 14 years ago when, when <laughs> yes. you just started. I, I don't know if you've seen the videos recently, but if, if you look at no, I person. cannot do this. <laughs> no, <laughs> I that, cannot click on this. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. If you if if you see this person, or if you think of this person uh, from two thousand and eight, who who do you see? Who do you hear? I see a, a teenager in a bedroom. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea about what she's doing. I think just having fun. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really really happy about this uh, development. I would have never thought it would have taken this turn. But like I was saying, I, I'm not able to click on these old videos again because uh, this is not watchable for me. But I, I don't know. It's kind of cute when I'm uh, thinking about this. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm happy it took this turn. I wasn't expecting this at all. And uh, yeah, now I, I'm I'm living. Uh, it's, it was my dream just to live from my music, uh, and uh, I'm really grateful for this. I think I started at the right time because. Uh, like you said, I started posting in 2008. I feel really old. And at this time, uh, this time YouTube was not uh, really old. I think sure. YouTube maybe was a three, uh, had been created two or three years before this. So I guess I, w I had the right timing. I was lucky, right timing, work, patience, motivation, and not a lot of people on this, uh, on this slot. So. Mm -hmm. And then, then also as a, a young guitarist, that, that can be very inspirational for people who also try to pick up the guitar. So, so what if you, especially if you think of the early days of, of you developing your skills on the guitar, what were the things that you were focusing on? And as you mentioned, 2008, YouTube had just come out in, in a sense, mm -hmm. and you kind of get this platform where you can share your music yes. with some people so so what was that like and what was that kind of those initial things that you tried to focus on like so i think i, I was trying to do I, I was really motivated by other guitarists other youtubers okay. um uploading covers and i wanted to do the same i thought okay they managed to play sweet child of mine solo or mm -hmm. sultans of swing solo this is my challenge i'm going to try to do it and see if i get some feedback and and comments and i was really excited at the time i was uploading a video to hear about what people were thinking. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I think um, I think my uh, I was really motivated by learning uh, solos and like kind of the technical aspect of it, I would say. And now I'm less into uh, the guitar hero thing, but okay. at the time that's really what I was into. Can, can you share one guitar solo that, that you found very difficult to learn? Uh, um, yes, I think it's not a solo, but I think the most, uh, the most technically challenging, um, uh, video I posted was, uh, the, a John five cover, the one called damaged. It's an instrumental song and it's like a solo, the whole song. <laughs> um, and this one, I never thought I would be able to play. And after a few, because I, I kind of tried playing it and learning it. Uh, too early, I think, and I was completely uh, not motivated anymore because I thought, okay, this is not possible. And then I got back to it again a few years after, um, and I thought, ah, maybe this is manageable now. So I put a lot of time into this, and I managed. But after a few years of not practicing this song, of course, I'm not able to play this now. But <laughs> I think, um, I think if uh, if I yeah, if I put a, a bit of time, um, if I put a bit of time uh, in this again, I would certainly be able to play it again but this was the most challenging what did you personally get out of the guitar i still do i suppose but what what do you is it, is it very kind of almost meditative what do you get out of playing guitar for me i, I i'm not even sure i can put words uh, on this i think it's just a, a part of my body you know the, mm. the guitar it feels natural if i didn't have this i would feel naked I, even on stage for me it's hard to uh, at the moment, we are trying to we're working on our new show, our, our new um, set for the next tour, and we are working on some moments where I don't have the guitar, and this is totally new for me. I, I don't see myself without a guitar, and I don't know what to do with my body when I don't have a guitar. My 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 uh, arms are just hanging, you know, and just I I'm a, I, I don't know. It's a, I don't know how to behave. So um, 
I, I, I wouldn't say it's a therapy, but it's a big part of who I am. Sure. And you allude to something interesting. And I've talked to a lot of guitarists who did, or, or at least artists who started out as, as purely focused on the guitar and then kind of developed into this so songwriter and vocalist as well. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they say similar things where that switch, you don't know what to do as, as the front person. It's, it's, it's a bit weird without yes. the guitar. So for you, how do you, because I believe on uh, Head Above Water, you also try to focus a little bit more on the vocals and on, uh, on the songwriting. So yeah. how did you you kind of hone in on that aspect of what you do um yeah i tried to focus a bit more on the vocals try to find a different approach i i knew that for this album i didn't want to yell so much <laughs> i want i wanted something a bit quieter still rock still energetic but find another way to uh to to sing like uh because i i stopped i think i i stopped trying to uh copy people i i was uh I was always for the previous albums. I think I was always trying to think, okay, I want to sing like her. I want to play like him. I want a song that sounds like this. And in the end, it maybe it wasn't me. It was too influenced by my models. And um, and for this album, I thought, okay, I I should forget about all these influences and just try to be myself. And that's the approach I had. And I I know I'll never have a a, a bigger hard rock voice. So. I should try different angles, like try, try to play more on the rhythm with my voice or try to uh, sing in a way like I'm, as if I was speaking or play, yeah, with the, play with the rhythm, layer more backing vocals, find, find other techniques. And I, I focused on this rather than copying people, you know. Right. And I, I, I think... Um... Yeah, Seaside is a good example of that. But, but before we get into that song, then what gave rise to, to this... Uh shift and it, was it just confidence was it just getting older and then kind of wanting to yeah. do more <laughs> show more of yourself what, what was it that gave rise to kind of you noticing okay i don't want to play a sound like any other people anymore i want to sound like myself mm -hmm. yeah i think that's this maybe it took a bit of time for me maybe some people know exactly what they want to do and where they're going from the beginning mm -hmm. but for me it wasn't the case and I, I needed, I think, this time without concerts, without shows and without without touring, this time that we all had the free time uh, at mm -hmm. home during the lockdowns and everything, it helped me reflect on uh, what I really wanted to do, who I was, where, where I was going. And um, in the end, I think uh, you can feel this when you listen to the album. So I, I gained uh, confidence and I, I know myself uh, better. And um, and yes, that's. Uh, I think you can feel this. Very quickly, uh, then, because I don't like to talk about the the, the lockdowns too much, because yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I prefer to leave it in the past. But um, one thing that I've noticed with with artists, especially when when music is kind of your identity, and then you tour and you do all that stuff, and then suddenly it gets taken away in a little bit in <laughs> in, in a way. Um, how did you think about yourself? Did, did you kind of discover things about yourself outside of music or, or how did you yeah. kind of, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, because first, I think before the pandemic, I didn't have time to think. I was uh, mm -hmm. almost constantly on the road, not really thinking what I was doing. I was just following the pack, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I was really happy. I was happy with my life, but I was kind uh, of in my little bubble not really caring about anything else than playing rock. <laughs> and uh, sure. I was happy with my simple life, but <laughs> it was just all about rock and roll. And I think the, of course, the pandemic is a horrible thing, but it, on me, it had a, some positive, uh, a few positive effects, like uh, reflecting, yeah, reflecting more. All this time, uh, we, I, I used it, uh, I think I, I used it to know myself better. Um, I also moved uh, from my uh, apartment and uh, went to Portugal and I think uh, being in the nature was a was a good thing I put a, a lot of um, time into surfing too okay. <laughs> tried surfing but yeah yeah and um and uh yes uh, so in the end I think uh it opened my mind a bit uh, on some aspects but it's interesting that you say that because as as you said it, it, it reminded me. I think in Head Above Water, but correct me if I'm wrong. There is a line like uh, "There's more to life than rock and roll." Or yeah, yeah. something along those lines. Exactly. So that's what I just said. That's uh, this mm -hmm. is summing up what I said. Um, that's what I realized because I I thought okay I, I wasn't caring about anything. I, I was happy, but I, uh, and now I don't know with everything that happened. I reflected and 
I met I met other people and it really opened my mind. People that are not into um, into rock and roll, like uh, I, I uh, I'm more concerned about climate change, about uh, mm-hmm. feminism, or thing a, a lot of things that I I wasn't really caring about before. Well, the, the, you mentioned something interesting because when I usually when I talk to guitarists, I ask, okay, so who are your influences? And obviously yeah. you, you've talked about it before, but. Um, the thing that I I thought of was well when you were coming up, were there female guitarists that you looked up to because there weren't that many that that got no. to that higher level. So no, no. At the time where I started playing, I, of course I knew a sure. female uh, guitarist uh, existed, uh, but I was really I I think I didn't need any um, any uh, female role models. I could uh, I could be inspired and motivated by uh, Joe Bonamassa slash Mark Knopfler. Uh, and I, I never questioned. I, for me, I, I, I never told myself, okay, I think I cannot play electric guitar because I don't see any women doing this. Okay. For me, it was not a question of gender, and I, I, I didn't have, a, I didn't struggle uh, finding my place or anything. Okay. But uh, because I knew some some women were playing rock, but I, I, I wasn't really uh, inspired by this. But now I know that I, I think I was lucky to grow up um, in an environment where nobody told me i know you cannot do this because you're a girl or a woman but i know that uh, with the messages sometimes that i'm receiving on facebook and youtube some little girls need uh, women on stage or need to see women uh, playing to understand that they can do this too so if i can i didn't need this help but if i can help uh, women and, and girls uh, to start to play electric guitar I, i'm really happy to contribute uh, to this in my own way yeah, I think especially with the, as you mentioned, kind of being at the forefront of the YouTube generation, it's it's uh, it's also good for people that uh, to see what what is possible in a way. Yeah, and I received, for example, it's not always uh, girls or women messaging me, sure. telling me, ah, I started playing guitar, but for example, also uh, uh, dads play, saying, ah, yeah. I uh, I got uh, my daughter uh, uh, a nice electric guitar for her birthday, and you are her model, and yeah, it's nice when all the family is involved, you know. No, that's very great to hear. And this reminds me of something else that maybe it fitted better earlier. But um, talking about kind of you coming up, because the way I see it, you f- it feels like you have kind of a foot in both worlds in the in the new uh, kind of digital era of, of yeah. music, but also and the in, traditional. Yeah, you have mm-hmm. kind of like this old soul who wants to, I, I yeah. suppose, still do some things analog and kind of have that old school sound. So how do you balance those two worlds with, yeah. with social media and everything? This is the tricky part, <laughs> balancing, <laughs> because the, the problem is that now, these past years, I've been so involved with my uh, live project, my uh, my uh, mm-hmm. the albums and the touring part, that I was kind of neglecting the YouTube and the social media, I think, okay. because on this part, nobody's pushing me. Nobody's telling me, okay, you have a deadline. You have to post this video on this day. I should be doing this myself, but I don't. So um, I really want to try to balance this more because I know there, there are, I could do a lot of uh, more. I could do more, way more. So I think uh, we're going to tour a lot the next uh, within the next months to promote mm-hmm. the album from March to uh, to uh, late September, I think we're going to be really busy on the road, but I really want to uh, put more time and more effort in my uh, YouTube and media after this. I think I'm going to try to separate the year in two blocks, you know, like uh, the traditional uh, sure. on the road uh, block and the like virtual, uh, try, to, try to share with the people uh, from uh, on the internet. And then obviously you're going to uh, promote the album on that tour. So let's get into the album a little bit bit more i, I mm-hmm. mentioned seasick earlier and we, we talked about kind of how you use your voice so with that yes. song in particular it's a it's a very you you mentioned you didn't want to scream anymore and that's that's yes. this is a good example of of trying to be a little bit more um subdued in a way yeah yeah, yeah. so, so mm-hmm. what was the approach with this song did that kind of happen naturally yeah i really think i just thought okay i'm gonna sing what i can sing in terms of uh uh, technique um, yeah. and uh, I want to layer more backing vocals if I want to create a dark uh, atmosphere yeah I don't have to scream I, I can do it in uh, other ways so yeah Seaside uh, can be an example of this even though it's this song is not the most rock of the album mm-hmm. but um, but yeah, yeah I try I just try to think differently but in the end it came that na- it really came naturally 
That, that song Seaside, uh, you mentioned going to Portugal. Was it written there? No, actually, it was written before I went. Okay. So, but I then I thought, okay, I think this song has a spot uh, in the album because it's coherent with the <laughs> with the um, the theme, you know. Because I I thought um, I wrote this album, most of the album near the ocean, so I would like to have this water related uh, theme. And I think you have several tracks like Head Above Water, Seaside, and Glassy Days, which uh, are yeah a, a bit uh, around the water theme. And I I, I like this idea, knowing that the previous album was more fire or oriented I, I like the idea to go toward the water this time so, so you go with the elements so next one yes. next one is going to be either wind or earth maybe <laughs> maybe i i i hadn't uh, think about this uh yet but I, i'm going to start thinking about this <laughs> fair enough uh, what is it about the uh, this is going to sound ridiculous maybe but what uh, what is it about the ocean then that that is inspiring or just being think... away from home and I think it's a bit like uh, like music and like guitar. It's uh, or playing music. It's a bit un- unpredictable, you know. It's it's a bit like life. You know, I, I like this aspect. It's nature. You cannot control it. You have to accept. Um, it's really yeah. For me, it's uh, reflecting uh, what life is about. You cannot control what's happening, but you can um, control how you're reacting to it, and uh, yeah, how you're facing this. So I like the un- unpredictable side of it. But is that then the concept of head above water to to kind of because we live in a very chaotic world at times and and is is that kind of the idea of of being in the ocean as well where you just floating along but you try to keep your head above water? Yeah, yeah, a bit like this too. I think it's a it's also it's a a topic that everybody can relate to. You know, I didn't go deep into the details because I wanted this topic to stay open for people to think that they could relate to this. So yeah, it's about bad moments that can happen but they all uh, come and go in waves and you just have to face it and try to keep your head uh, above water and you know it's going to be okay in the end it's just uh yeah waves bad waves you know and as a as a songwriter then because uh again i, th- I think that the focus was a little bit uh more on vocals and songwriting this time around is is there a song or maybe just a line that you were really happy with or really proud of that, that and and that can kind of show the development of you as a songwriter? Um, it's not the one that I'm the most proud about, but in Head Above Water, there's a line saying, uh, "Life is so much more than what rock and roll is." I think yeah. that's how I, I'm seeing life at the moment. Is uh, there are so many so many great things that. I should be open-minded and not just focus on my little music, you know? <laughs> so this is not the best line ever, but this is maybe summing up uh, what, how I've been thinking lately. Oh, fair enough. And aside from rock and roll, there's all, also different <laughs> kinds of music like blues and country. So so you've decided yeah. to, to play the banjo a little bit. I, I think it's yeah. you playing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, so I, I, uh, I really wanted... Uh, because I could have hired musicians, but better musicians mm-hmm. to play banjo and lap steel. But it was important uh, to me to to really play these instruments myself. And I'm really motivated. I want to work more on this side of the of the music. And that's yeah, definitely I- instruments I'm going to include in my next record too. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I never really listened to traditional blues, but country music, yes. Um, and I know these uh, instruments are really uh, present in this uh, in these kind of music. But we don't have a lot of. Uh, yeah, country bluegrass is almost non-existent in France. Okay. Uh, that's why it's a bit <laughs> challenging. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, no, no I, I love this uh, approach of uh, um, widening, uh, you know, the the genre of the the music by adding mm-hmm. different textures with uh, new instruments, and it's uh, it's challenging and it's motivating. What is the most? I've, I've never played the banjo, but I've always yeah. been fascinated by it. So, so what is the what is the biggest challenge of play, playing that instrument? Is it so, very different from guitar? Yeah, at least it's a string uh, instrument. So mm-hmm. it's not so far. But for me, the difficult part is the you know the metal picks you have a uh, like mm-hmm. finger picks you have a uh, on your on your fingers. It feels sure. like you you are you you it feels like you're. You're not really in touch with the. Okay. You cannot really touch this, so it's really different than to play with your fingers or with a pick. So you really have to uh, adapt to this technique because it's really different than the guitar. And for me, playing banjo without these, uh, this doesn't sound like the banjo. It really adds to the metal, uh, like a ting ting, uh, you know, tone. Uh, so for me, the the right hand is the most challenging because when you're looking at traditional banjo players, they're running on the on the 
on right. the strings and it's really impressive I, I i want to work more on this i'm not saying i'm going to release a bluegrass <laughs> album but at least be more comfortable when i'm playing but in terms of kind of incorporating these uh different elements into your songs and and kind of arranging them in a way that 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 it works is is that was that a learning curve for you because i, I don't know how much you did that on previous albums but uh, was it kind of trying to figure um, out what goes where and yes so i'm uh, always starting with the guitar part okay. so i know i have a bass and uh, so the guitar usually yeah is all, always at the center and the main uh, the main uh, mm-hmm. instrument and then once i have the guitar i'm trying to think okay this kind of atmosphere uh, would it be suitable for another instrument or should i stay uh, like a rock uh, or um, folk or uh, so and, and it begins with the guitar and then I'm, I'm thinking should i add something or not sometimes i'm trying and it's not really working so i'm removing and uh, sometimes it's come it come later when i'm with the band and we are trying to arrange and rehearse together and then uh, they they are also um, um, sometimes uh, offering you know uh, uh, suggestions and uh, sometimes i things that i didn't think about or couldn't see it's also good to have uh, other um, sure. uh, opinions and then I suppose you mentioned uh, preparing for the live shows. Uh, that that brings along with it uh, uh, new ideas, I suppose, as well, because you kind of you have to translate yeah. what you did on the album to the record, and that it can't yeah. be an exact copy always. So, but that's tricky because on the album I played a lot of things. So <laughs> there there are, there are a lot of um, guitar par- guitar parts. There are there's banjo, there's lap steel, there are a lot of backing vocals. And in on stage, I cannot be four people. So the, <laughs> this is uh, we decided to rearrange a few songs in order to play them live. Otherwise, uh, we cannot play them, or we can put samples. But I don't want to put samples because we're playing rock, and it's not uh, I, mm. uh, it's not modern like this. So um, so yeah, we rearrange because now on stage we have a keyboard player. So for okay. example, on some songs, the banjo parts that I played. Um, on this on the album are played by a keyboard on stage with kind of a with a funky sound you know so and it works so we try to find ways to rearrange the songs so that they could sound good live and not empty and this is tricky we're still thinking about things because this is not done yet especially for the backing vocals part because i i did all the backing vocals on the album and there are a lot of backing vocals and I and the, on on stage there are two guys <laughs> with me that are maybe <laughs> not sounding the same as me, so sure. it's a bit tricky and it requires a lot of work. So I hope we'll be ready for March. We don't have a choice anyway. That was going to be interesting to to see how you figure it out. I think. Yeah. And and I mean in terms of the techni- uh, technological possibilities, one of my favorite guitar sol- solos of all time. I I later found out it was played on a keyboard. <laughs> so, ah. Okay. <laughs> it was, it was a song yeah, sounds... by Bob Marley. There's a there's a guitar okay. solo in it. But I, I've then I saw a documentary and it was just played yeah. on the keyboard. So it can, it can sound perfect. You know. The, the, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes sound. you can be really uh like it's uh, tricked by this and i think it was kind of the same for me i thought there was a guitar solo on uh, i want to Bre- break free by queen mm. but i think it's a, a synthesizer solo <laughs> it's not a guitar I, I i have to recheck but maybe he's playing this live guitar but the studio is a is a keyboard right. and, uh, and I, I didn't know this for me it sounded like a guitar <laughs> no but that's the fun thing i think it's <laughs> In, in the modern day, we can be creative with those things yeah. and, and you can figure it out. So finally <laughs> then, um, you mentioned the type of music that you make isn't that big in France. And now I believe you do play a lot in uh, Germany and it's, it's it's doing well there. Here in the Netherlands, there's, I don't know, it's it's not the most popular, but there's a, a lot of rock uh, being played <laughs> and uh, opportunities for, for your type of music. Um, how do you see kind of your place in music in, in that sense, because yeah, music is always kind of going through these phases and, and stuff. So, so yeah. how, where do you see yourself fitting in? Uh, it's, it's hard to have the, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I can really figure this out. It depends on the countries mm. uh, here. The, yeah, the, the rock scene is not so big, not so popular. So at least uh, the, it's not popular, but there are not many bands doing this. So we have mm. a, a, a slot there. And we've been touring. We've been mostly touring uh, in France uh, since uh, I started. So we have the the fan base here that we can. Of, sure, of course, we can increase this, but we have a fan base here. But I know that 
the countries uh, next to us are really into more into rock and roll. And that feels good sometimes to go play for the German uh, crowd or the, the Holland crowd or yeah, it's uh, it's really different, but, and you're not so far. So I don't understand why it, there's yeah. such a big difference between the cultures. Um, so, um, so yeah, yeah, it's hard to, I, I'm just playing my music and then we're navigating and we, we, we discover every time we're going to tour in, mm-hmm. a, in a new country, sometimes, we we also um, uh, notice that the crowd is not the same, you know. For example, in sure. Spain, I, I noticed that people are a bit younger, more women uh, in the audience than uh, than in France, for example. It's really uh, I don't know. It's a uh, I'm playing my music and then uh, we'll see what what happens. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to uh, to study this uh, this topic. But yeah, it's uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, one last thought then, because you mentioned uh, in the beginning of the interview. As a young girl, your dream was to be able to to make a living playing music, and and now you do, exactly. I suppose. And then the type of music that you make obviously is uh, America inspired. So is is that mm-hmm. now the dream then to to go over there and to play there? I would love to. Maybe we're going to be able to do this this year. I'm not okay. sure, but uh, we'll see because we've never toured there. Um, uh, and uh, and now with this new album, maybe there's an opportunity. We'll see. We still don't have a booker for mm. for um, the the US, but uh, I hope it's going to happen. So so uh, yeah, I, I want to tour as uh, as uh, yeah as long as possible. And if we can uh, discover new new places, I'm uh, always uh, in. Sounds good, Laura. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thanks a lot. Thanks you. Thank you. And I hope to see you on the road uh, this year. <laughs>